Hi. Uh, the vermiform appendix. The appendix, the, the bit that hangs off the cecum, um, the, the large bowel. What on earth does it do? Well, let's have a look at its microscopic anatomy. Let's have a look at the histology. Are its layers the same as we've seen in the rest of the gastrointestinal tract? Because we've looked at the esophagus and the stomach and the small intestine and the large intestine. Is it the same or is it different? Uh, what cells and how are, are those cells arranged? And what will that tell us about the functions of the appendix? So if you've watched the other gastrointestinal tract video, you will remember that the tube of the gastrointestinal tract is made up of a number of layers. Um, we have the mucosa closest to the inside that the food is up against, and then we have the submucosa, then we have the muscularis externa, and then we have the serosa. Do we see the same thing uh, in the appendix? Because the appendix is just an outgrowth from the cecum. So it should, it should be the same, right? Okay. Well, that looks similar, but different. So there in the middle, there's the lumen. So it's called the vermiform appendix, because vermiform means it's worm shaped. The appendix is an appendage. So there's this worm-shaped appendage. Um, we were looking at this this week, actually, in the lab. I had to go and find it for students that were teaching. And it's often just a few centimetres long. Sometimes it's many centimetres long, but it's usually a little thin. That's what students struggle with. It's smaller than you think. It's, it looks insignificant. Um, and I don't know what animal this is from, but look, we're doing pretty well. This is my four times objective uh, lens. And we're doing pretty well at getting the whole lumen in the frame there. So the mucosa is up against the lumen. Oh, we can see some familiar features. We can see things that look like crypts, intestinal crypts. Uh, but we can see big purple spots, similar to something we saw in the small intestine. And then we see another layer, and that's definitely layers of muscle there. So we are seeing mucosa, although it's a little different, submucosa that has blood vessels and nerves and what have you in, muscularis externa, and if I swing over here, particularly if I swing up here actually, we can see that, we, there we go, we get, we get a better sense there of the layers of the muscularis externa and the serosa, the connective tissue covering it, which has got more blood vessels in it and fat and what have you. So let's start on the inside and let's zoom in. Which way shall we go? I should probably go... Those look pretty nice. Let me jump up to my 10 times objective. Um, so that's 100 times magnification to my eyes. The magnification for you will be a little bit different depending upon the size of your screen. Um, but what we're looking at there, so okay. We're not seeing any villi. We saw lots of villi, finger-like projections um, into the lumen in the small intestine. We're not seeing any villi in the appendix. But we are seeing an epithelium, and we are seeing these crypts, what we would call these intestinal crypts. And it looks like those crypts are filled with goblet cells. So that looks very similar to what we saw in the large intestine. Let's jump up to the 20 times objective. Very pretty. And um, yeah, we can see on the surface, well, wow, that's quite a fat section there. We can see on the surface um, a simple columnar epithelium, so a single layer of cells, so it's a simple epithelium. These cells are tall, so it's a columnar epithelium. And I reckon I can see a, um, a microvilli border there. So we jump up to the 40 times, just have a closer look. Yeah, 
Do, do, do. So uh, microscopic anatomy is just like um, gross anatomy when we're looking at the cadaver. Sure, we might expect to find some anatomy, but we need to be careful to observe what's actually there, not what we expect to be there. Um, if I jump over to the other side, that's really nice. So over there we've got... That's better. It's kind of clear, I think. Over there we've got a simple columnar epithelium um, with a microvilli brush border. And then from that, that lumen, from that surface, we have these crypts, these intestinal crypts going into the substance. So it's quite a thick folded section, isn't it? Into the, we've got these crypts going into the into the substance of the appendix. So uh, in those crypts there, those are filled with goblet cells. We'll also find in there the same sorts of cells we saw in the large intestine. So stem cells and uh, enteroendocrine cells and what have you. Um, yeah, I can see some enteroendocrine cells there. Um, but mostly goblet cells. Goblet cells look like that because they're filled with mucin. They're gonna make mucus, which in the large intestine helps everything move along. Well, for the whole intestine. The whole gastrointestinal tract that helps lubricate and move everything along and protect the epithelium. Um, so that looks very familiar. The other cells then, so the other tissue, the cells in between the uh, the crypts, the other, this is the lamina propria, the connective tissue supporting all of this. Um, but if I uh, if I zoom back out and again. we do see something quite different. So, we're looking at the mucosa. There are, there's our epithelium with a lot of intestinal crypts. But look at this over here. Well, what is that? Now that looks similar to the small intestine where we saw the payers patches in the, in the ileum. So this is lymphoid tissue. And if I zoom all the way out, You can see that this lymphoid tissue is really prevalent in the appendix. So the appendix is all about lymphoid tissue. What is lymphoid tissue? Well, these are the cells of the immune system here. Um, you can see so the, the paler centers are the germinal centers, and you have these purpler cells around the outside. In there, we're going to have T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes and macrophages and what we call eosinophils. So these lymphoid follicles are the immune system. Um, this is where the immune system lives in patches of lymphoid tissue around the body. It's distributed around the body as well as cells being in the blood. Um, so this, we, we might refer to this as GALT, gut associated lymphoid tissue, or MALT, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, because of course we're looking at the mucosa here. Um, but this, this gives us a, a clue as to what's going on in here. So, um, current thinking, current understanding is that uh, we have symbiotic bacteria living in our gastrointestinal tract. And these bacteria are really helpful in us digesting things. So we have good, this is what we mean by good bacteria in the gut, we have healthy bacteria. But of course, we also have bad bacteria that get into the gut. That's why we wash our hands and cook our food. So we try to avoid this dangerous bacteria getting into our gut. It seems that the immune system in the gut has roles in not just looking out for the bad bacteria and getting rid of them before they cause, cause illness, but also in kind of uh, fostering the good bacteria, helping the good bacteria thrive. Um, so that's what this lymphoid tissue is doing here. Now, the, the, for a long time, and it was certainly taught in school when I was a kid, I think it was still taught in university when I was at university, but it's been, the thought has been held for quite a while now that the appendix is a vestigial organ, which is why it's fine if you, if you wanted to remove it because of appendicitis. Um, but that good bacteria the appendix can be a store, a storage location for that good bacteria. 
If you have a gastrointestinal illness and diarrhea and vomiting flushes out your gastrointestinal tract because you're, you're trying to clear out all of the bacteria in your gut at that point to get rid of the bad bacteria. But of course you clear out the good bacteria as well. If you have an appendix, the good bacteria in the appendix will survive that flushing out and then the good bacteria can repopulate your gut to help you with digestion much faster. And I think there's evidence to show that people that have an appendix have, uh, they're less likely to, mm, there, are, uh, there, was, there were repeat infections with what, Clostridium difficile or something like that. Um, people who have an appendix are better able to fight, out, fight off bad bacteria. That's probably the best way of phrasing that. The appendix is useful. Now, one other thing to look for, so if we've got these lymphoid follicles around here, oh yeah, there's a good one. So there's a lymphoid follicle, and look at this, as I go up, it's up against the epithelium. It's up against the epithelium of the lumen, right? Uh, whereas we have intestinal crypts over here, we don't hear. If you think about the cells of the immune system, they need to be able to communicate, monitor, be involved with whatever is in the lumen. So if we look here, we should find what are called M cells. Yeah, all right. So there's, look, there's the, the center. And then as we go to the outside, there's our, those are our dark purple cells. Now, as we go towards the lumen, does the epithelium there look a little different to the epithelium there? So there we've clearly got our simple columnar epithelium with microvilli, whereas here, this epithelium, the cells look shorter. These are the M cells. Let me, let me go up to a higher power again. Uh, these M cells are called M cells because um, they don't have microvilli on their surface. We can't really see that at this re resolution. But they have uh, micro folds on the, the lumen surface, on the apical surface. So look, here we have our simple columnar epithelium that we've seen a lot of in the gastrointestinal tract. And we can see how that's continuous with the crypts down here. Um, but with the epithelium next to the lymphoid follicle, we see, uh, we see these M cells, these shorter cells with microscopic folds in their cell membrane up against the lumen. So those cells are facilitating communication between whatever's in the gastrointestinal tract and the cells of the lymphoid follicle, which is pretty cool. Worth pointing out, I think. Um, all right. Now, we have been, when we've been looking at the gastrointestinal tract, what we've been doing is we've been taking our time and we've been, probably the, the mucosa has taken up most of our time um, and we've been relating how the mucosa is different in different parts of the gastrointestinal tract and relating that to the function of that part of the gastrointestinal tract. And we're doing exactly the same here with the appendix. Those are the functions of the appendix. This is why the mucosa looks like this. So these, these lymphoid follicles are largely in the mucosa and largely in the lamina propria, the connective tissue bits of the, of the mucosa. But if we push further out towards the outer edge of the gastrointestinal tract, we can see that they do kind of push into the submucosa, that layer there. So there's the next layer of the submucosa. Can we see a muscularis mucosa? There's a thin, smooth muscle layer when we look at the GI tract in most places. Mm, I'm not convinced I can see a... There's not a strong muscularis mucosa there, is there, in this mucosa? Hmm. So do you see what I mean about um, <laughs> um, what you expect to see and what you actually see? 
Um, yeah, so elsewhere in the gut we've seen a muscularis mucosa, a thin layer of smooth muscle marking the border of, between the mucosa and the submucosa. We're not seeing that here. So here's the submucosa. Um, so what we can see in the submucosa is we can see small blood vessels, arterioles, venules, lymphatics, and there'll be nerves in there as well. And then we're sliding out into the muscle there. But remember, this the section on this side wasn't very good. Let's go to the other side. Let's go to the top. Um, there we go. So just to keep you clear on where we are, see we don't get lost. There's the lumen. There's the mucosa. There's a lymphoid follicle in the mucosa. And then there is the submucosa. And uh, those dark orange lines are just folds uh, in the section. Usually you just get a lot of stain caught on the fold there. Um, but we can see lots of uh, small blood vessels in there, can't we? So there's a, great, there's a great blood supply to the appendix then. And then as we slide out, we're seeing the first layer of muscle. And we know that this appendix is, has been cut like this. So we can see that that is a circular layer of smooth muscle, just as we've seen elsewhere in the gut. And as we slide further out, we can see that longitudinal uh, layer of smooth muscle, which is running like that and has been cut like that. And then on the outside of that, we've got the serosa. We've got that thin layer of connective tissue surrounding it all, holding it all together, compartmentalizing it. And we're seeing some more blood vessels in there, as you'd expect. And usually we'd find fat whenever we look at this in the body is covered in peritoneum and fat and what have you. But that's it. So, yes, the appendix does have the same layout as the rest of the gastrointestinal tract, but the mucosa is uh, specialised for a large bowel function with extra immune system um, on top. On top, but inside. Lovely. So it's nice to be able to take what we already know and uh, apply it again. Um, why do we have problems with the appendix? Well, this is, um, like I say, it's a, it's a blind ending tube coming off the cecum. Um, so it has just one little hole, it has one opening to the cecum. The cecum is the first part of the large intestine. Uh, and of course, uh, normally um, stuff, fecal matter, moves into the lumen here. Moves in, moves out, the appendix is happy, everything's cool. But if that opening gets blocked, then whatever's in here, in the lumen, gets stuck in here. And it gets stuck in there for a long time. So, um, you know, it, you might have eaten uh, like a hard object that covers the whole, you know, this is why we eat a lot of fibre, right? Keep everything moving along, or one of the reasons. Um, or it might be just fecal matter covers the whole. So then these cells, in the appendix start to become inflamed, appendicitis. So an itis is an inflammation. Um, that inflammation very helpfully causes pain, helpfully because it alerts you there's a problem. Um, as the appendicitis develops, the risk is that you'll get changes to the cells here. And out here, you've got the peritoneal cavity. So if these cells and the tissues here change and uh, you get a rupture, through here to the peritoneal cavity, now you've got a link between the lumen there, which has fecal matter in it, and the peritoneal cavity, which is properly inside you and should not have fecal matter inside it. The inflammation will spread, uh, which can lead to sepsis and shock and death. Um, so if this inflammation is being caused by bacteria stuck in here, then antibiotics can help but often surgery to remove the appendix um, is the solution. Right, does that microscopic anatomy, does that cellular layout and tissue layout better help you understand the gross anatomy of the appendix and the problems that happen with the appendix? Because it does me. And also looking at the cells helps us understand the functions of the appendix, right? It makes it all a little bit real. But that's it. That's the microscopic anatomy of the appendix. Another pretty section. Right, see you next week.